frontier is defined as uncharted territory by land or notion. Those who chart that territory tell a story. The past illustrates the blueprint for the present. How things are and how they've evolved. From land to water, we are challenged to border that new frontier. A frontier the outdoorsman knows like no other. Author Gary Lewis works his way along that edge of where discoveries, failures, and achievements have written the story of the sportsman. Yes! Yes! From state to state, continent to continent, the stories told create the foundation of the present and they lay the framework for the future. Through the muzzle fire and on the stone are stories from the edge. Water is the most important thing as far as Indians are concerned, because that's, that's life. The past is written, the present is here, and this is Frontier Unlimited. In early 2016, 25 scimitar-horned oryx were herded into an airplane in Abu, Dubai, and made the nine-hour flight to their new home in Chad. Fourteen more scimitar horned oryx were turned out into the desert in early 2017. With these releases into an unfenced area the size of the state of Indiana, the scimitar horned oryx will no longer be classified extinct in the wild. But special reserves in Tunisia, Morocco, Senegal, United Arab Emirates, and Texas have kept the species alive and saved the scimitar horned oryx for the world. There is only one place where oryx de ma exist in significant numbers to be hunted. That place is Texas Hill Country. A herd of more than 70 oryx live on Roger Smith's ranch, and to keep from exceeding the carrying capacity, he allows a few to be removed each year. I was a Marine Infantry. Um, my MOS was 0351, which was assaultment at the time. Who's our first shooter? Brian. You're up for patrols and convoy security. It's kind of like, I guess when you do it all the time, it's not really a big thing, but other than just making sure guys had ammo, making sure guns were were right, gear checks, making sure we had all the equipment we needed or thought we needed for the vehicle and then some. I don't have great eyes. I saw the movement real low and I... Oh, I, I saw the white and the tan go. Okay, but... you see there's two oryx standing right, see the big tree right in front of us at yep. about 11 o'clock? Right side. There's, there's two oryx to the left of it. We're watching animals out through the, out through the trees here. We saw some oryx in this island of trees over here. And well, that was from way back there. And so now we're trying to make our approach. And as we got here, a bunch of black buck ran that way, kind of cleared out. But then I saw a fallow doe over here as well. So we think that the oryx are in the trees here in front of us. We're going to ease up to the corner and see if we can we can spot them and then we'll find out where they are and if they are we'll, we'll make a big circle and come down the back end then we'll come come through on foot. I've been teaching at Baylor Law School for 14 years and one standing and in my spare time I hang out here at the ranch. I don't see any um, scimitar. We want to walk in. Okay, yeah. good call. I'm going to check the lack of wind here. I use the old-fashioned grass. I don't. I'm not that technologically advanced. These these pot out. These will grow just like a pea pot. It'll get big with mm -hmm. and it and it's extremely high in protein. Mm -hmm. Deer, deer and animals they'll strip the they'll oh. just strip them, mm -hmm. which is good. That's why we have them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what is it? Mesquite. Oh, it's mesquite. Yeah, sure. this is mesquite. Yeah. You know, you go to a barbecue place to say we cook with mesquite. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. I threw the sticks in between my grandparents' property, uh, a, f a couple of friends of ours, their property. All right, I'm good with that. Okay, is there one in the chamber? Nope, not yet. Not yet. Chambered up. Yeah. We had a uh, pretty good amount of places and an opportunity to hunt. The main thing, mostly what we hunted was white tail deer. Little rattlesnake. 
right here. It's, it's a, he'll he'll strike from from that position, and he'll come out of there so fast that I mean oh, oh. you can't even blink. Scimitar horned oryx also is, I think, an astoundingly beautiful animal. They're they're a, for the size of the animal, they're one of the most uh, graceful uh, animals on, on in the field, I believe. Something small over here, little antelope. The meat's excellent. Uh, the horns are very sought after. In fact, that's why they were almost hunted to extinction in its native country. And the scimitar kind of came by accident. Yeah. The oryx are all right yeah, there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. We'll try to get up there and, and pick one right away. We'll move up to that. We'll move up to that uh, oak there. Okay. I inherited nine of them from a friend that uh, wanted to get rid of them. I said, "Well, I'll take them." Didn't know anything about them. Did my research, and that was, I think, nine years ago. It was the first scimitar on the ranch. If all went right, Lewis and crew would get to take some meat home to sample some of the legendary taste of North Africa. How often does a hunter get to put steaks from an endangered species on the grill? Obviously, one of them saw something they didn't like. They moved about 300 yards, and they're moving away. And it's not us that spooked them, something else must have, because they they never saw us, so. Roger Schmidt, a rancher, attorney, and Marine, a Renaissance man, lover of animals, fine wines, and finer firearms, a conservationist to the core, the scimitar horned oryx is his most prized and favorite species. When he extended Lewis an offer to carry a rifle on his Texas ranch, there was no turning that down. But Lewis had another plan in the works. There was a fellow he knew in Dallas, Heath Guns of honored American veterans of field, coordinated with Gary to make this hunt happen. Ryan Lentz would hunt the oryx. You could right there. Right there. Okay, put your pole down. A hell of a shot. There's a big, big son of a gun looking right at us. Look through the. Look at the horns on it. Oh, right there. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to try to get it? I'm, I'm, I've got a little window there, so nothing should affect the bullet. So. Well, she's. It's. It's moving to the right now. That's. Perhaps the shape of the oryx horn gave its form to the back sword that gained widespread fame from the Ottomans onward. They're in the heavy mesquite. We're gonna have to get up closer to get the scene. Okay. Here we gotta get low now. This time we had a calm, steady breeze in our faces. Schmidt, Lentz, Kura, and Lewis took cover behind a screen of small mesquite and eased along to get a look at a specific animal. Of them together. Yep, the one so one this yes, yep, to the right. That's a good one. His horns are a little like this. Lentz waited, and then he flicked the safety to fire and pressed the nozzler trigger. Oh, good one. Good hit. Good hit. I lost him. I lost him. He's down. Good hit. Yeah, that was a good shot. Let me tell you what Oryx do after one's been shot. They will all hurt up and they'll that sit there and look at That was awesome. Because they don't know what to do. Good job, Brian. That was nice freaking awesome. <laughs> nice shot. Good job. Excellent. Thank you. Good it job. was a good solid hit. Good job. I knew the shot, when the shot broke, it was it was good and I could hear the thump. But the gun moved off of, I lost him in the, in the glass when, after the shot broke and I couldn't see him. And so I, I don't got him, I don't got him. But these guys, they said they, they got him and, and they called it a good hit. So, cause after that shot, if I had to take a second follow up, I had, I mean, they were, there's too many. When he was, when he was, I was actually waiting for the shot. Where he was, if he would have, we were waiting to turn, waiting for him to turn. If he would have taken like a half a step right and step forward, I would have lost him in the mesquite. Yeah. So fortunately, when he took, when he turned, he actually turned broadside left to me. Yeah. 
and had a huge window to actually make a shot. Yeah. So I had plenty of time to make the shot. He turned left, beautiful shot. Did you feel your heart rate coming up a little no. bit during that time? No, you Nothing, able to everything, that. plenty of time to stay calm and make the shot I needed to. After the shot went, heard the hit, and knew he was down, that's when all the adrenaline, Yeah. <laughs> that's when everything dumps, that's and now, now yeah. I'm all jumpy and ready to go, so. <laughs> Built for survival in the desert sun, the Oryx's coats are white with a reddish brown chest. You shot a little higher there, Ryan? Maybe. I'm good with being yeah, natural. Cool. I, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, it, mine don't have to be you know, pretty, I just like them the, well, that's kind a good, of the way that's they a, are. That's a good animal. Yeah. Yeah, she's a good animal. Whatever your kids are calling them these days. very well actually the the uh, trick in all of this is having the shooter pull the trigger and he uh, Ryan did a good job great shot when I learned about it, I never thought I'd see one touch one you know well, you can shoot one if you want yeah. I told you that yeah. oh you gave yours away that's right that's Son right bit, that's huh? right this one right here <laughs> yeah. some good food there boy I tell you yeah. what, they, they eat so very well We're gonna check the zero on my new rifle. Donnie? Give it a give it a check. See what happens. Should be good. Should be good. Just gonna shoot it one. Well, I think that's pretty good. really serious elevation we're up here above most of the mesquite trees we can see a lot of country from up here this thing is powered by a big american v8 with a double pumper holly and uh, it's got headers on it we can really rip if we need to but basically we're just looking for a game right now and seeing what we're seeing this reminds me of so many places I've been in Southern Africa. I'm doing this on the Kalahari Desert and I'm out in uh, South Africa on the border with Botswana and, and with Zimbabwe. Same thing, different place. I'm gonna go try to find the oryx. They're all spread out, the oryx are all spread out along the other side of the field over here. Did you know that already? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> it looks like the herd's really split up. Yeah. They're about a 700, that's about a 700 yard spread between the two on the end. 430 yards. We're close, but we're not close enough. I haven't been busted in six months, and twice in one day. They run so easy, don't they? Mm-hmm. I got a really good look from here. There's a big no guy with them. Wow. Yep. Okay, you want to leave us here then? Yeah. All right, we're gonna wait for these animals come come right to us. Here or in there? We, I, I'd like to get into that little patch right there. Out in the open again in the afternoon they found a herd in the grasslands at the other end of the ranch. This habitat is as close to the native North African habitat as can be found south of Eden. This is 6.99, that's not bad. It's a chip shot for you, Gary, right? 
The whole herd is headed straight to well, us right that, now. I'm looking, I can see almost 400 yards down and there's nothing. We've got, oh, 40 of them and they're all okay. just lined out. Okay. The Cimitar horned Oryx in sight where they could keep an eye out for trouble. This time trouble was Tracy Wilson with the Nosler rifle in hand. Hell of a shot. Wow. It was about 250 at the time? 247 is what I got it at. It's a very nice animal. It's an adrenaline rush. <laughs> like Ryan, I felt totally calm before I took the shot. Afterwards, it was just the adrenaline rush. Nice animal. Thank you. Very nice. Well done. Wow, and a great shot, oh, too. Oh, that's a view. Beautiful. Time to oh, go yeah, look. they're wonderful. <laughs> some owl dad laying in the trees right here. We're gonna go make a sneak on it, but we got the wind wrong. Yeah. They'll think we're a bunch of apples coming at them. Yeah, two seconds. That's all the time you're going to get. Safety off. Yeah. Just wait. This is the spot you want. Okay, put your safety back. I guess the perfect one is the one that's dead, right? Yes. <laughs> This is a oryx uh, tenderloin from the, the same thing as a beef tenderloin. This, this is a the tenderloin off a back off a uh, black buck male. These beef tenders marinating. You know, we we uh, started out this process as a as a commercial hunting preserve, and and soon found that it was not certainly not the niche for me. I, I grew up hunting, I enjoy hunting, it's, it's always been an extremely large part of my life. Nice beef chateau brion. I love hunting and it isn't so much about the kill, it's, it's more about, uh, it's a lot like church, it's about fellowship. It's about sharing, not so much your hunting experiences even, but sharing your life and, 
in your family and in your history and you know the things that we all care about so much with other people. This is these two are beef chateaus. These are axis tenderloins. This is an, a complete oryx tenderloin. And and finding out that you know you think you're the only one that walked around with your zipper open one time. No, everybody does. And it's it's yeah. it's that type of camaraderie and and the the fellowship that is pretty instantaneous uh, hunting. Axis. You want a little beef? No. And hunting with friends especially is 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 to me uh, um, one of the one of the most wonderful things ever. Um, you know, you guys are new in my life. I hope we have created a friendship. We had a we had a, we had a great couple days, and hopefully we can have some more. There's three kinds of meat on here that I've never tried before. And along along with you folks here, I had another friend come down today, and he's going to hang the weekend. And that's what it's all about. It isn't so much about, and we're not going to hunt anything. We're, we're going to, we'll probably do some shredding, probably some cleanup, uh, take some trees down that need to be taken down, feed the animals, uh, watch the animals. We spend a lot of time just watching the animals. I, I think the, the, uh, the beauty in, in, that's inherent in, in all these different species is, is extremely uh, enjoyable to watch.